Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we want to encourage you all to join our Chosen Few Expat community. You can scan the QR code that is on your screen or click the link that is in the description down below. So in our community of Panama Relocation Online Course students, myself, and just other in, uh, people who are really, really interested in making this move to Panama, we have uh, several of the articles that we don't get to cover in the NAP sessions. So you get a lot more information about what's going on in Panama. In addition to that, we have several frequently asked question videos, which you can pull up there on demand, and then just a bunch of general discussion um, amongst us and questions and more direct interaction with me as a part of that group. So you can sign up by clicking the QR code that is on your screen or the link that is in the description below. Also, if you're interested in our Panama Relocation online course, you can scan the QR code that is on your screen, or you can also use the uh, link that is in the description down below. We have over 50 instructional videos which guide you step by step on how to make your smooth, efficient move to Panama. Many of our modules also have PDFs that are downloadable that you can keep, you know, for yourself and for your reference. So, you know, our course is comprehensive. Everything you're gonna need to know from A to Z on how to complete your move. We also include an international relocation planning tool um, that you can use to set up your move like a project and manage it like a project because that is exactly what it is. As part of that, that comes with an uh, international uh, budget planning tool so you can plan your budget. Also, we have several checklists that you can use up to two years before your move. Two year, one year, six months, three months, one month, one week, and even a moving day checklist. So you can know everything you need to do step by step and make sure that you're keeping things on track. We also have a lot of information on how you should plan your exploratory trips so that you can make the best, most efficient use of that time. So it's very much well worth it. We do uh, still offer right now in our pre-launch phase a 30-minute free consultation. Uh, we can also offer you the opportunity to become an affiliate uh, with us. So if you know others who are interested, you can get your affiliate link. You can sign up and you can make up to 40% commission uh, on that. So you can end up basically getting your course for free. So if you're interested in that, you can scan the QR code that is on your screen or check the link that is in the description down below. Uh, also, you can check our website, PanamaRelocationOnlineCourses.com if you have interest in the online course or our other products and offers. So with that, hope you all enjoyed this interview with Mike Kelly of Expat Health Services. Hi, welcome to the Chosen Few Expat Show. I'm Alonzo. Today we have with us a guest who's been an expat in Panama for 12 years. The owner of Expat Health Services is joining us today. Let's welcome Mike Kelly to the show. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Alonzo. How's it going? Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Going great. And uh, thank you for taking the time to join us and give our subscribers and online course students some much needed information about your services in Panama's healthcare system. So with that, let's not waste any time and get right into it. So if you would, please, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Definitely. Uh, so I moved to Panama in the beginning of 2011. Uh, or 2012. I've been here about 12 years. Um, and my wife is Panamanian. Uh, we actually met in California. We were both studying in San Diego. Uh, we met in 2004 and previous to that i lived in costa rica for a year so i'd already spoken spanish when i met her and uh which probably helped me you know uh and when i met her you know kind of you know won her over with that uh but you know i was always actually looking for opportunities to move back to costa rica and so when i met her back in san diego back then you know it was uh and and we started getting serious i was like well you know panama's close enough to costa rica so i think Panama, you know, this is, uh, this is going to be good. And I started to come down regularly with her. Um, so I had gotten to know the country really well, traveling regularly to Panama. And after a few trips, I knew that this was, I wanted to live here. I mean, I, I was already wanting to get out of the United States, but I was like, Panama is the spot. Uh, but, you know, we, we were doing our thing. We finished school. We both got jobs in California. Um, and so around 2000, my, my daughter was born in, in 2012, right before we moved, we moved here in big part because of that. She was born and we said, no, this is the time. My wife wanted to be with her family. 
and her friends here in Panama. And I said, let's do it. Let's go. So we packed up and moved to Panama with our newborn daughter. And, um, you know, I'm going to tell you something, Alonzo, the best thing I ever did. Love it here. No plans of ever going back to the United States. Uh, the quality of life is great. Uh, great place for my kids to grow up. I wouldn't want them to grow up anywhere else. And uh, I just love the country, love the culture, um, you know. And so I, since I've, I've lived here permanently for 12 years, but I've been coming down since 2005. Uh, so, you know, it's it's really home for me uh, at this point. And um, so, yeah, my, you know, I've always been, you know, with my wife, uh, kind of mania and her friends and family have really just been, you know, exposed to the culture so much. And uh, it's been nice to be able to use my experience here to help people that are thinking about moving here to town. That sounds great. I echo uh, all of your sentiments there about Panama. Hopefully more of the people watching our subscribers and online course students can, you know, make the trip down here, make the move down here and, and just understand, you know, what it is you're talking about there. So one thing to add, I have a uh, Panamanian coffee. So the coffee is very good here in Panama. Coffee uh, is excellent. Yeah. Just to uh, add that in there. Uh, <laughs> way better than Starbucks. Let me tell you that. Yeah, they have Starbucks here, but I don't see how they're making any money. <laughs> I don't either, man. They're not they're not using Panamanian coffee. Yeah. I tell people there are a lot of local kind of coffee shops and coffee chains. I say don't go go to Starbucks. We got Neil, we've got a various coffee shops here. So yeah, you'll be when you get down here, if you haven't been here, you will find out. They have that cover for sure. Yeah. So um what inspired you to start Expat Health Services? So expat health services evolved uh, from uh, a few different things, but my I, I opened a primary care healthcare clinic or medical clinic uh, when I moved here. So I basically got down here and, and jumped into that. There was a business opportunity that I had when I got here and went with it. Um, and it was a primary care clinic. Uh, we specialized in uh, occupational health care and general primary care. So we have general doctor, general physicians, uh, full-time nurses, in-house clinical laboratory uh, imaging. So, you know, you could walk in, see a doctor, um, similar to like an urgent care clinic in the United States, right, where you can walk in and sit next to a doctor. Um, and we were, the, the clinic was located in an area where there are a lot of multinational companies. So we were perfectly positioned to provide occupational services like pre-employment exams, annual exams, drug testing, different things that companies need uh, and health services that they provide for their employees. So, you know, that was a big part of business, right? Uh, but the difference, you know, that you'll find here, you know, as a primary care walk-in clinic is that, you know, our prices are really good. I mean, it's very, you know, healthcare is much more affordable here to pay out of pocket. A doctor consultation costs thirty dollars instead of what two, three hundred to five hundred dollars in the United States to sit next to a doctor, you know, and have in the United States usually it's like ten minutes. The doctor really doesn't even look at you; you're just kind of going through the checkbox. So there's a big difference in quality and attention here. Um, and so basically, what happened, and to kind of get back into how expat health services evolved is that a lot of expats started to find us because I speak English. And so they, I had started to get referred, people referred to me uh, that were having issues with communication with other clinics and doctors that weren't fluent in English. So I would have people refer to me, expats, you know, say, hey, call, you know, hey, contact Mike, like he'll get you set up. He's, he's uh, expat and he has a clinic and a doctor that speaks perfect English, so our doctor, uh, was also 100% bilingual. So started over the years getting following of expats that would come in, get their health services with us. One, because we you have know, quality of care and two, you know, communication. Communication is key. So over time, getting these people referred in, you know, for that. And around the pandemic times, we started providing services like at-home consultations, video call consultations. Um, having lab work done at home, like super convenient services that I was able to provide um, because of my network 
you know, my network of physicians, English speaking doctors and, and labs and things like that. And so it just started to catch fire, take off. And expat health was formed as a provider of like what I like to call concierge style health services. And that's really just the ultimate convenience, you know, high quality, good doctors that can go to you and get on a video call, you get all this stuff done. You don't necessarily have to get out of your house, catch an Uber, sit in a, a crowded clinic waiting room or hospital room in order to see a doctor, you can get the same quality or better at your house. And so it was something that no one was doing and the opportunity was there. And so expat health services were born from that. Wow, that's an amazing um, service, an amazing need that you were able to, to fill there. You know, it's um, we're very referral based and, and people find us just because someone said, hey, you know, contact expat health services. It's, you know, it's, um, you know, here it's just the, the key has been uh, good customer service, high quality care. And if you can do that consistently, then people find you. Yes. Yes. And that's, um, it's definitely a unique service that you're providing also. So for that reason, it's going to, you know, people are going to want to find you. And, and that's why you're getting all the referrals and, and everything like that, because it is a very, very unique, much needed service for expats. So um, can you provide us with an overview of Panama's Healthcare system, because I know a lot of people watching this video maybe do not understand how the healthcare system works in Panama as opposed to their home country. So, can you give us some insight on that? Sure. You have a, a public health system here and private. Uh, so, in, in Panama, there is a public system which is low cost, in some cases, free. Um, how, is it, how is it set up? Well, Panamanian employees. Or employees in general that are on payrolls have a social security tax here it's called social security it's the public health tax taken out of your paycheck that pays for public health care it's designed for panamanians um, as a low cost or free health care option um, and it's that's how it's been for a long time the there's some downfalls to the system for sure and i'm not really talking about the healthcare professionals, more like lack of funding for facilities, equipment, run down facilities. Um, so that's one thing that you'll notice if you use some public hospitals. Another thing is just wait times. You know, the public hospitals and medical centers are used by the general population. So you have a lot of people there. If it's urgent, you might have to wait a long time rather than at a private hospital where you can get right in. You know, so if, if it's an emergency, you don't want to have to sit in a, in a line and wait. Uh, you want to get right in. So, you know, if you're counting on public system, yes, it's inexpensive, uh, but it's not necessarily convenient. And it's, you know, there, there are some issues there. If you want that convenient service, high quality, um, you have the private hospitals and clinics. It's um, similar to the United States. You know, you can have private insurance. You can pay out of pocket. Costs are still much less than in the United States. Um, so general and primary care, you can easily handle without having insurance, right? Paying $30 for the doctor consultation lab works less expensive than the United States. These things are, if you need it once or twice a year, no problem. You paid out of pocket. You don't need to be paying insurance premiums um, for that type of thing. Um, but you, where you do need insurances for medical emergencies, urgent care, hospitalization. Um, if you're planning on using the private health system here, which is recommended for expat, um, then you will want either local private insurance, um, an international plan, or just have a fund set aside, money set aside for medical emergencies. If you can't, the, the truth is about health insurance, private health insurance, it is restricted it's it, you know there are age limits uh they there are issues with pre-existing conditions you can't always get coverage if you can it's very restricted so you know some people the only option is to have a fund set aside for for medical emergencies whatever works out for you you know you have to have that set up and know what you're going to do before you move to panama to have the
those costs covered because you don't want to get here and then be like, okay, now what do I do? And that's also one of the things that we do at Expat Health Services is we do healthcare tours to get all of that stuff set up ahead of time. But you know, you know, back to just the health system. That's it, it's public and private. Uh, you know, if you can, don't don't plan on moving here and just go into the public hospital when you need it because it's not going to be as convenient as you might think. Hey, thanks for, for providing that information. Um, I know you touched on it when I asked you about um, how you, uh, why you started Expat Health Services, and you mentioned some of your services. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to go into more detail with any of that, um, and, and just kind of how things work when, when people or your customers contact yeah. you. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks. I'll. Um, Expat Health Services are, you know, like I said, concierge, concierge health services. So people are like, well, what does that mean? You know, what what is concierge? And like I mentioned before, convenience and quality. So we provide at-home doctor consultations. So Expat Health Services has a team of English speaking doctors and with doctors that will go to you. So you contact us, we organize the consultation, usually it's same day. I mean, most of the time we get a doctor there that day you call, he's there. So it's not always necessary to sit down with a doctor, whether he goes to you or you go to a clinic. Uh, sometimes it could be done over a video call, right? Um, and this was really made, you know, people, we saw how good this is during the pandemic here in Panama. We had a lockdown where you couldn't even leave your house for a long time. So video call consultations really kind of became more popular. And now it's like, wow, this is, it's a great service. And you just get on a video call and tell the doctor what's going on. The doctor can write you a medication prescription and send it to you digitally. The doctor can send you lab orders digitally, which we then organize with one of within our network of clinical labs and send a lab tech to you. So you don't even have to go to the lab. Our lab tech will go take the blood sample and take it back to the lab. So it's just, um, you know, you're just sitting in the comfort of your own home. Kind of nice. So, yeah, that's really the, the, concierge concept uh, and it's just high quality high convenience we have a network of primary care clinics within panama city so if you do want to go sit down with a doctor and sometimes you do have to do that um you know there are reasons why you would have to go to a healthcare facility we can get you connect to the facility closest to where you live uh with our recommend the doctor. So we have doctors in our network that we um, we know are great, you know, uh, great references. Uh, all of, you know, our, our clients and our patients um, have had great experiences with our medical team. So we set you up with best doctors. Um, and then, you know, as far as medic, med uh, medical specialists, you know, you're talking about your cardiologist, gynecologist, urologist, whatever it might be. We, we work within a network. So whatever you need, we set that up within our network and get you in. A big thing, Alonzo, as you you know, a lot of people get frustrated with like trying to schedule appointments with like, with receptionists and secretaries most of the time aren't gonna speak English. The doctors might, you know, you can have bilingual doctors, but their secretaries probably don't speak English or just very little. So, we kind of fill in that void, like, you know, rather than having to struggle with a receptionist that you can't really understand, we will take, just get it done. You know, we schedule your appointment, get you the information you need. It's all set. All you have to do is just show up. So that is also something that we do a lot of. Um, and you know, also just the referral network, you know, having these doctors that have been vetted, you know, that have, we've been using that our patients have been using that good experiences with. Um, so, you know, it's just, um, you know, it takes just a lot of the headache out of the whole process. And that's really what we're all about. It really is truly an amazing service you're providing. Um, <clears throat> so one other question I know a lot of people are probably gonna have is, is there insurance coverage in Panama for Medicare and or Medicaid? And they use it. That is a great question. Um, typically Medicare, doesn't cover you outside of the United States. There is 
an exception to that. Uh, if you get set up, it's Medicare, Medicare Part C. So you have to have Part A and B, and then you get Part C. Medicare Advantage, you're covered for medical emergencies only. Okay. So you can be in Panama. That's not just in Panama. It's pretty much anywhere outside of the United States. Um, so if you're here in Panama and you have a medical emergency and you have, you're set up with your Medicare properly to have this kind of coverage, then what you do is you pay out of pocket. Medicare will then reimburse you. That right now is the extent of your Medicare coverage in Panama. They won't cover anything else. They don't cover primary care, only urgent care, medical emergencies. If you're set up properly, Medicare Advantage Part C, and um, it's on a reimbursement basis. Uh, otherwise, they will only cover you if you're in the United States. Reimbursement so, basis, very, very important yeah. fact to add there. So um, Super important. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You know, you can't come here thinking that it's going to work like it does in the United States. Far from it. And, uh, you know, I wish it did. It's unfortunate that uh, they can't, you know, they're in a little bit more like flexible with that. But right. that's that's how it is currently. Right. Well, thank you for that um, information. So, you know, we have a lot of people moving to Panama on the pensionado visa, a lot of retired military. So a lot of folks are going to have this question concerning insurance coverage for veterans with TRICARE uh -huh. and or other VA benefits. So does, does that exist in Panama as an option for those folks? Yeah, it does exist. That's And, and that's a really good point to emphasize when people uh, get a lot of vets coming through. Uh, and when you, if you're a, a veteran, the first thing that you want to do is to get set up with a BSO. This is the, the VA representative here that will get you registered in the foreign medical program. Now, what that is, is uh, the FMP, it's how you can get your VA coverage here in Panama. Um, it's a little bit different though, because you're only covered for service related conditions. Whereas in the United States, you'll, you're covered for everything under the VA. But if here, you're only covered if it's related to conditions from your service in the military, right? And it's based on your percentage, your, your percentage of disability. So it's very important. The first thing you have to do is get set up with a BSO because they're the ones that are going to get you set up in the system, registered so that you can go to the healthcare facilities that accept the foreign medical program and, and use those benefits. Um, and there are a couple locations, but the main hospital in Panama City that accepts the F, uh, coverage through the FMP and TRICARE is... Brisa's hospital, Brisa's and, and Brisa's del Golf. That's the main hospital for that. They're not a VA hospital, but that's where most veterans go for their health care because it's they're, they're organized there to accept those types of insurance. But um, yeah, and, and we can help. I, I, I can help you if any, you know, for, for military veterans that are going to be moving down here. Um, you know, we are happy to get you set up with a BSO to get that process moving. Okay, yeah, thank you for that. So thank you for pointing out also that it's not a VA hospital. So a lot of people may have this misconception. Um, you know, you are able to, to exercise those benefits on service-related issues only, yeah. which is another great point, but it's not a VA hospital, and there's technically no VA hospitals. In, in right, there, there aren't any VA hospitals here in and yeah, I just, I don't, you know, I emphasize that I don't, because I don't want people to think that they can, when they get here, that it's just like going to a VA hospital in the U.S. That's just, it's not, it's not a VA hospital. Uh, however, you know, that specific hospital are organized so to make it easy. But you do have to know the details. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm giving an overview. The VSO is the one that's really going to get into detail and tell and, and let you know uh, how it works. And, you know, even TRICARE coverage is, is more limited here than in the United States. So it's, it's, it's not the same, um, but there are options. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, so another question I think that a lot of people are going to have is, um, are there difficulties in obtaining health insurance based on age and or pre-existing conditions in Panama? There are, yeah. So there are age. A lot of the private insurers have age limits 70, 75. 
Um, if you insure before, you know, it, it can vary, but if you ins get the insurance before that limit, then you're good. But if you don't, then, it, you know, you, you might not get insurance. Pre-existing conditions, case-by-case uh, -case basis, they're, they're, the insurance companies are either not going to give you insurance or just going to flat out deny coverage. Or just not give you insurance. Not, not, this, not deny coverage, just say, sorry, but we, we can't give you insurance. Or they're going to limit your coverage and basically say, um, okay, you're insured, but um, we're not going to cover anything related to that service related condition. Or, no, sorry, sir. It related to the pre existing condition. Um, so you're covered for this stuff, but if it's related to that pre existing condition that you have, you're not going to be able to cover it. So that could, you know, that could defeat the purpose of insurance for some people. Yes. So, yeah, it could. Yeah. So again, Private insurance is an option for some, but not for everybody. So that's where you need to look at, okay, if, if those are, if that's going to be an issue, you have product conditions or things that the insurance companies will just not insure you for, um, then you need to have your plan B. And so that's that's very important. And to get that figured out before you move. I've had a lot of people come down here and contact me looking for insurance, and they just can't get it. And, you know, maybe thinking, well, you know, they, they had kind of assumed that they would just get insurance. Uh, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news in those cases. You know, it's not, like, it's not me. You know, it's the insurance company. They're, they're so, uh, you know what I mean? But uh, it's important to have all of that set up and know your options before you move down. Okay. Yeah, that um, very important information also. Um, and that's one of the challenges that people may face. Um, do you know of any other, can you think of any other challenges that some expats may encounter when seeking health care coverage in Panama, aside from the age or pre-existing conditions, um, are there any other problems they may encounter? Or is it pretty easy to get, aside from that, pretty easy to get? Insurance? Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, location is important. Okay, so some, some challenges that you, that you might face uh, would be living in an area where you're more remote. Um, like I said before, Panama City is where you need to be if you have a lot of health issues that you're going to need to have addressed on a regular basis. You're, that's there's more hospitals, better quality, better doctors in Panama City than anywhere else in Panama. So, first of all, you need to move to the right place based on your needs. If you have a lot of healthcare needs and you live in Peta C, then you're going to be far from the best hospitals. Um, even Boquete, Boquete has some hospitals, but most people that live there for you know end up coming to Panama City. So, you know, you that's something that you really have to think about. Like, how close are you? You know, if you live at the end of the Azuero Peninsula and Peta C or Playa Manau and those areas where they're beautiful, I mean, that's a the, the lifestyle is amazing there, but you're not close to the hospitals. So now you have this challenge of, okay, if I have a medical emergency or I need to get to a doctor, how can I get there? If the closest hospital is two hours away and the hospital that I want to go to is in Panama City, you know, that's a three and a half, four hour drive. So location is key very very excellent <laughs> excellent point um so you know throughout panama they do have a lot of uh clinics um through like mensa the ministry of health things like that but in terms of yeah. top end hospitals yeah, yeah. You, if you have any kind of conditions you have some concerns about you definitely need yeah. to be in close proximity if not in the city yeah i mean every town has a, a medical center a public mm -hmm a public health center every time. Um, but, you know, that's not necessarily a good option, especially when you're in more remote areas. So like I said previously, don't count on the public facilities. It's not a good idea. You want to have your plan to get to the best hospital if you have issues that you know about that need to be addressed. So, yeah, I mean, you can get minor things, you know, resolved at the local health centers, but not everything. Okay, so with, with that, then how can our subscribers and online course students contact you for more information about Expat Health Services and these fantastic services you provide? 
Well, you can always reach us on WhatsApp. Um, my, my WhatsApp is 6614-1448. You can flash that up on the screen if you want, or just leave that in the, at the end. Um, you can reach us uh, on our, you can go to our website. So on our website, you can actually, actually schedule appointments um, for at-home doctor consultations. <clears throat> Tell them that everything we do, you can schedule online through our site. The website is uh, www.expathealthservices.com. Pretty easy. Expathealthservices.com. Um, you can also reach me on email at mkelly, M-K-E-L-L-Y, at expathealthservices.com. So for all health-related health matters, that would be the best way. But I, yeah, I mean, Alonzo, you know, WhatsApp is like the most convenient form of communication. So... I would just recommend if you want to get in touch with us ASAP to send a WhatsApp to that number, 6614-1448. Now, thank you for sharing that. And yes, thanks for making the point about WhatsApp. Also, for those who don't know, that is basically the primary mode of communication here in Panama. So if you're going to be traveling down or moving down, if you're not familiar with that app, you may want to familiarize yourself with it because it is used pretty much everywhere. Um, so yeah, we definitely will flash all of the information that Mike mentioned on on the screen for you to see, and then also in the description of the video. So thanks so much, Mike, for all of this um, information on Expat Health Services and the uh, healthcare system in Panama in general. Um, appreciate you joining us today. Hey, no problem, Alonzo. Thanks a lot for having me on. I appreciate it. Now, um, just before I let you go. Um, I want to know if there is any advice that you have for our students who plan on becoming an expat in Panama. Of course, the folks in our course, are, you know, they're pretty much committed. They are coming to Panama. They are making the move. So well, you have any pieces of advice for them? And this could be as related to their health care, health care services situation, or just life in general, or both. Yeah. You know, when I moved here, I, I didn't have uh, these resources people have now didn't exist. There were no, uh, the, uh, I would have loved to have had the, uh, your, your service and your courses available back then. Um, so, you know, these are, these resources and opportunities are amazing. Uh, and you know, your course is going to be just you know, so much good knowledge for, for all of these people. So, you know, that, and also tours, um, you know, go, with, uh, you know, get your feet on the ground. You know, I, I would always recommend before you just move down here, uh, first come down and, and do an exploratory mission. Um, you know, have in mind the areas that you're interested in and, uh, you know, do a relocation tour. You know, Mike also has another company that is VIP Relocation Tours Panama. So as he mentioned, it's a good idea for you to take a tour we are um he's going to mention it briefly here but we are going to have a, a separate video where we go into that in more detail so with that mike can you tell the people a little bit about vip relocation tours panama yeah thanks alonzo yeah it just kind of yeah, segues into that pretty nicely just because i think that um you know things like the the expat course with alonzo and a, a tour, an actual tour, get your feet on the ground tour are two of the most important things that you could do. It's getting that knowledge, right? Um, and so in addition to expat health services, uh, I have a relocation company called VIP Relocation Tours Panama, which I'll be talking to Alonzo in much more detail in, in another episode. But basically what we do are tours, private and group tours across Panama. And um, it's a combination of healthcare, real estate, finding proper, you know, how a real estate place to live and, um, you know, just information, uh, you know, just the, the best combination, most thorough relocation tour. And something like that, I think is key uh, really to give you the idea of where you want to live. Highly recommend it, you know, uh, before you make that final move, come down, get your feet on the ground do a tour and then you'll really know. And, and part of the tour, healthcare, expat health 
you know, ties into that where we actually uh, introduce you to your doctors and specialists that you'll need to manage your care. So you'll get that set up as part of the tour. Um, and when you move down here, you'll already have your doctors. Everything will be set up for your insurance, everything. So it's going to, it just, it takes a huge, the, the, you know, weight and headache away from the whole process. My best advice, you know, oh, yeah. is Thank do you. these, get your, get your feet on the ground, um, get everything set up before you move. And, uh, that's that way when you get here, you're just, you're hitting the ground running. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much for that information. We very much appreciate your time today. Hey, Alonzo, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate the opportunity. It was great to talk to you. And uh, hopefully uh, I was able to provide some valuable information uh, for your listeners. And I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thank you. We'll see you. Take care. Have a good one. Convenient and it's you know there there are some issues there. If you want that convenient service, high quality, um, you have the private hospitals and clinic. It's um, similar to the United States. You know you can have private insurance. You can pay out of pocket. Costs are still much less than in the United States. Um, so general and primary care you can easily handle without having insurance, right? Paying thirty dollars for the doctor consultation, lab works less expensive in the United States. These things are, if you need it once or twice a year, no problem, paid out of pocket. You don't need to be paying insurance premiums um, for that type of thing. Um, but you, where you do need insurance is for medical emergencies, urgent care, hospitalization. Um, if you're planning on using the private health system here, which is recommended for expats, um, then you will want either local private insurance, um, an international plan, or just have a fund set aside, money set aside for medical emergencies. If you can't, the, the truth is about health insurance, private health insurance, it is restricted. It, it's, you know, their age limits, uh, they, there are issues with pre-existing conditions. You can't always get coverage. If you can, it's very restricted. So, you know, some people, the only option is to have a fund set aside. For, for medical emergencies. Whatever works out for you, you know, you have to have that set up and know what you're gonna do before you move to Panama to have those costs covered. Cause you don't wanna get here and then be like, okay, now what do I do? And that's also one of the things that we do at Expat Health Services is we do healthcare tours to get all of that stuff set up ahead of time. But, you know, you know back to just the health system, that's it. It's Public and private, uh, you know, if you can, don't don't plan on moving here and just go into the public hospital when you need it because it's not going to be as convenient as you might think. Okay, thanks for, for providing that information. Um, I know you touched on it when I asked you about um, how you 
uh, or why you started Expat Health Services. And you mentioned some of your services. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to go into more detail with any of that um, and, and just kind of how things work when, when people or your customers contact yeah. you. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks. I'll, um, Expat Health Services are, you know, like I said, concierge, concierge health services. So people are like, well, what does that mean? You know, what, what is concierge? And like I mentioned before, convenience and quality. So we provide at home doctor consultations. So Expat Health Services has a team of English speaking doctors and with doctors that will go to you. So you contact us, we organize the consultation, usually it's same day. I mean, most of the time we get a doctor there that day you call, he's there. 